I'm creating a new project and uh, the purpose of this project is to demonstrate the purpose of the grid to ground feature. You'll notice that as I'm creating the project I'm setting an appropriate coordinate system for my area and you'll see that I have downloaded a geoid file from the geoid catalog. The geoid file is important because I'm going to take an observation to compute a scale factor and it's important that observations be corrected for geoid separation. You'll notice that I am not going to scale total station measurements. Uh, that's because I'm going to be scaling my GPS measurements around the rough centroid of the project and that will make it unnecessary to scale total station measurements. Now I'll create my project. And I'm going to connect just to the internal GPS, which you can see I've already done, that I'm already on the job site, and I'm roughly in the middle of the lot, which is the area that I'm going to do my work. So before I begin taking measurements, we're going to set up a ground-to-grid scale factor. So we're going to go to Project Data, GNSS Local Transformation, and we pick the Grid-to-Ground option. So this is a tool that gives you lots of options for inputting a scale factor. You, if you have a scale factor from a static processing report, then you can use that. But in this case, we're going to calculate one in the field. Once I pick Calculate, we see we have different options. Um, you can input either a latitude, longitude, or coordinates if you wish to define a point. You can select a point if you've already taken a measurement with GPS, or you can take a measurement. So what I'll do is I'll take a measurement, and normally you'd be using um, an RTK corrected solution, but I'm just going to use the internal GPS to get us very close to the correct scale factor. And so now it's already computed what the coordinates are, and you'll notice further down that it has already computed a combined scale factor. If we pick on this uh, chevron, we can see a few details about the combined scale factor. One other feature that I want to take advantage of here is shift ground coordinates. So I'll check that on. And now as I slide down, this gives us a few additional options. So what we're going to do right now, before I enter a, north, a delta northing and easting, is that if we go to the position that I'm standing at right now, we'll find that our scale factor is set so that uh, total station measurements do not need to be scaled and they'll be exactly correct where I'm standing. They will become less correct as we move further away from the position that I'm at. However, if you limit yourself to within about one mile, of where you are, then you're going to find that your ground and your, your grid, or more importantly, your total station measurements and your GPS measurements agree with each other very well. The one thing that I'm going to do with the shift ground coordinates is avoid confusion that can be caused when you're mixing uh, scaled coordinates and non-scaled coordinates by asking for the program to apply a constant shift to every one of my GPS measurements so that they aren't mistaken for unscaled positions. So in this case, I'm just going to look at the north for my north shifting, and I'm going to tell it that for every shot I take, subtract 5,500,000 from the coordinate value. And then for the easting, I'm going to tell it to subtract 300,000. And when we apply it, then it gives us a summary, and it gives us a little reminder that the observation I've already taken will be corrected for that shift. So here we've got uh, a summary of the statistics and the combined scale factor. And you'll note, if you look at the destination north and east, that that's roughly the coordinates that uh, we're going to be working in. So I'll pick on Done here. And now what we'll do is we'll head back to the survey screen. And what we'll find now, I'll tap through the uh, observation toolbar, is that 
the northing and easting, which used to be in the 5 million and the 300,000 range, are now down in the 30,000 range. And that way they can be accidentally be mistaken for unscaled coordinates. Now we're ready to start taking further observations, and if we want to connect to a total station later on, we can shoot between them, and the distances will agree. Thanks for learning about the grid-to-ground tool with me.